I was just here at the DHL station to try to send a package home because it's too much. <laughs> but they only send packages with their own planes and uh, it would cost me about 100 euros. But the cool thing about the shop was that there was a scale and I asked if I can weigh my backpack and my weight is 26 kilos. Salut. Var bästa inglesa? No. Mer ku ku autostop transfer garasjan. To Brasov or are you going towards Brasov or that direction? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Mer ku autostop? No. 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 Okay. The mountains are just in front of me. Oh, okay. Um, now look at this. Zona frequentata de Ursi. Well, and I can hear the ganzen Berg, yeah, alles. Okay. Ich denke schon. Nee, ich habe auch hier Chuck Lowe, Schmal Schumare. Guck mal, hier die ganze Vorgarage, Gebirge durch. Ja. Manchmal auch Zelte mit, dann ist Sturm gekommen, hat die Zelte umgerissen. Oh. Alles nass und äh. Shit. Aber das war die Jugend, du. Ja. Das war die Jugend, da hast du da nichts für gegeben. Wir haben im Winter im Schnee draus geschlafen. Ja. Den Rucksack als Kopfkissen haben Plastiksack genommen, die Plastik ausgezogen, die Plastiksack rein. Yes. Der kälteste Winter, was ich hier miterlebt habe, war 1984, 85. Mhm. Da hatten wir 26, 46 Grad Minus. 46? 46 Grad wow. Minus. Das war der kälteste Winter, den ich hier erlebt habe. Wow. Und jetzt ist ja nichts vor Jahren in meiner Jugend. Und diese Zeit hat wir schon einen halben Meter, einen Meter Schnee. Andy, ja. jetzt fahren wir da hoch. <lacht> nee, das ist sauber, das war's. <lacht> <laughs> so, down there, somewhere, is Sibiu, and we drove up here through an amazing mountain road. And this is the place where they dropped me, which is basically the highest place you can get by car around here. And now to tell you more about my plan. Here is Sibiu and my direction, Serbia, is somewhere down there. And in between there is the Carpathian mountain range. And I am now really up on that mountain range. And my idea is that I want to hike along the highest ridge of these mountains in order to come out on the other side on this road here which is coming from Brasov and hopefully we'll find another car there and it seems up there there's a bit of snow um, so yeah I think I better get prepared for for the nights up here I have a tent good sleeping bag good mattress and as you saw I also stocked up on some food so that should last me at least three days I just heard someone screaming my name and... <laughs> hey! These are my friends who just brought me here. <laughs> From here on, it is just pure nature. 
Wow, look at this. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm up on this beautiful lake, almost 2,300 meters, and there is fish. Can you see them? Uh, I think so, yeah. I was thinking before to to stay on the main ridge, but I think it's a bit late for that to to cross. It's a little bit late to cross so, until Jurjulu. Is it called that way? Yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, you'll have four and a half hours yeah. till the next chalet. Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll have good weather. Mm -hmm. But you should move your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you have uh, uh, a flashlight. You've got you you've got something to 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 walk. You've got a tent. Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. you. You are safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Much <laughs> With pleasure. Guys. Th thanks for for the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> Pay attention, okay? Pay attention, Mali. So now I'm walking down here for a bit and then along and then up on this ridge and either I walk along the ridge up there or I walk behind it, depending on my energy and the time, because the days are really short, so I need to manage my time well. Salud. I, I don't necessarily have to do the summit, but I, I was thinking to go over the ridge, but there's also the option to go to Pudrago, yes. I guess, to yeah. not go on the yeah, ridge yeah. now. Yes. Um, and I've attended everything with me. Do you think it's a better idea to stay at Pudrago side now because it's already getting dark soon or? I think so. It's better. Yeah? Yeah. I think so, but it will still take you better and safer four hours mm -hmm. than what we have on our, on our, uh, and the signs. signs. Yeah. It's four o'clock. Okay. So either way. We'll be late. But in any case, I will find some terrain to put my tent, I guess, in between. Do you have, yeah, do you have any map with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not a physical one, but plenty yeah. of maps on the phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. This is the cabin. Ah uh, no, I was I was uh, pointing to the to the lake uh, to Jordan. All oh, right, all oh, right. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, and take the summit then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could do that. Could do that. Yeah. Let's see. But you have to cross uh, the ridge with your big backpack. Oh, you have mm -hmm. the same map. <laughs> Three hours because you have to climb this big, big yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. That's why. And that's a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all of it. I mean, my, my direction is basically... Moldovano. Uh, no, no, it's it's to somehow get to the road E574. Zernicht? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so either, oh, nice. I guess, Fundata, Sat. Satik or Kampulung. I know somewhere where I can find cars too. <laughs> okay, I have reached my crossing point. So it's either taking the steep ridge or avoiding the ridge and having a shorter way in total. And to be honest, I have two more hours of daylight and there's not a single soul around. And you know, I also got my backpack, so I don't really know how fast I can be. Um, therefore, I am going to choose this one, even though it's going to be most in the shadow. That's okay. I think tomorrow I will have enough ridge and um, yeah, no need to risk anything. So up to 
Cabana Podrago. That's the direction. It says four hours, but on my map it says two hours. So <laughs> let's see which one is more accurate. This is where I came from and through a bunch of snow I have now reached another saddle and now it looks like <laughs> I have to go everything down again and then everything up again and then on the other side down again and then up again and then we'll see how it continues. I heard to kind of stay safe from the bears. Uh, once you come close to the tree level, which is where the, what the bears really like, they like forest and they don't usually come much above the tree line. And I'm currently walking down towards the tree line and there's also a valley with a lot of water and probably nutrients. So from far away, I'm gonna start singing, clapping, making some sounds because bears can hear really, really far. Brown bears, that is. Usually they don't even like the contact with humans, except for the areas that are closer to villages where they know they can find some food and dumpsters. But in these remote areas, usually they really like to, you know, stay away from humans, understandably. And that way, this is a great technique to, to avoid attacks, I hope. You call me mellow yellow. Going down a dirty inner city side road, my bloody. Do -do -do. Six, seven of them. Wow. Okay, actually, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Ah, uh, seventeen. Wow, look at this lake. So I could definitely camp here. That's option number one. And this, this is my way, my direction. But I'm heavily considering just pitching my tent somewhere down there. But I'm not sure how berry this whole area is because it's already quite close-ish to the tree. The tree line. Hmm. But it's beautiful. I have been seeing these uh, for quite a few times now, and I think I will skip on this place and move on to the next lake because that one is higher up. And uh, yeah, I can very well imagine that this is bear poop. But please let me know if you if you know otherwise. <laughs> 200 more vertigo meters. But the thing is, the sun is already setting. And uh, usually you don't want to be around bears in the dusk time. Uh, and yeah, I'm noticing after sprinting for the last two hours that uh, I also don't have too much energy anymore, so I'm also considering just putting up my tent somewhere around here. I can still see the lake, uh, but yeah, I try to make it a bit further up and see how I feel. Best moment of the day. Oh. And it's getting cold quick. So yeah, I'm going to put my tent here, exactly on the saddle, on the ridge. Uh, 
the lake I came from is down there. The lake I wanted to go to is down there. It looks beautiful. Of course, you can't see anything. But I considered going down there. But um, A, it's dark. And B, the view from up here is fantastic. But you should know it is very cold. <laughs> I would guess probably like closely above zero and windy maybe you can even hear it maybe you can't even hear my voice so, um, so i am gonna prepare the tent now do you remember the snails in the previous camp at solnok in hungary i think i packed them with the tent here very faintly on the camera you can see see the view okay actually maybe this might be the best moment of the day cold and so windy I mean, look at this holy shit <sighs> just when I finished packing the sun comes out Something that happened yesterday night was that, you know, once I started to set up camp, I heard a few whistles, I think a barking dog and a human as well. But then again, I didn't hear anything. And then maybe half an hour later, once again, I heard some whistles. Um, and at the same time, I was also looking downwards towards this hut um, because I was kind of thinking about the fact that maybe if I'm up here setting up my camp someone would think that I'm crazy something happened to me um, because why would I stay up there uh, but then again I did not see any lights and no tents nothing so I just thought okay maybe it's someone who's just looking for their dog or whatever but then once I got into the tent it was probably around 10 10 30 uh, I suddenly heard a very loud hello right next to my tent and yeah that was Boro who is running this hut and yeah he came up here to check up on me because um, you know I didn't respond to his calls and they were about me but then again I heard them only very slimly also because there's a lot of wind up there and I really didn't think that they were supposed for me but they were meant for me but Still, he walked all the way up here and uh, he was worrying a lot, he said. Um, and yeah, that's why I think instead of just staying up here and staying on my route, I'm gonna head downstairs and bring him <laughs> one of my, my Austrian specialties. I mean, that's really, really awesome of him to just walk all the way up there to check up on someone he doesn't even know if they're in trouble Salud! Salud! Hello? Ah! <laughs> Morning! 
morning. I brought you something. It's uh, from Vienna, oh, from Austria. Thanks. <laughs> what do you do today? Uh, so today. What do you think you will do? Yeah, what I think I will do is to to pass mm -hmm. Mole, Molevanu. Yes, pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's heavy true. Loaded. But they yeah. said no, no rain. It, there is a bit of chance of rain today, but. Yeah, I, I think more likely in the night, right? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. right. So that was Boro really nice helpful person and he told me that i was lucky i did not stay in that first valley where i thought about staying with the other lake because there's a lot of bears and a lot of goats therefore a lot of bears so i think i made the right call and he also told me to stock up on water because for now for the next three four hours probably maybe even more there's not going to be any sources because it's up on the ridge. Boros little paradise. And he's actually standing outside for a smoke. <laughs> wow. Beautiful place. And up we go. Up there is basically where I slept. And down here, there's a lake. And it is half frozen. There's ice on this lake. Oh. Wow. Wow. <sighs> I think you can already see Morvaniano. Mol Molviano. This is the highest mountain of the Carpathians and exactly where I'm going. I don't know if you can if you can really feel the remoteness or the loneliness of this place right now. Done it. It's the mare. So this is basically the highest mountain of Romania, and well, this here is the Vista Mare peak, and over there, this one is about 20 meters more. And that's the first time I'm seeing people on this trail. I'm heading down there. And the view from up here is just absolutely immaculate. I mean, look at this. What? It's all around. won't be able to see much longer. Look at the speed. Those clouds coming in and filling, filling the valley. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Wow. The white wall. Okay. Tell me this is not the cutest refugio that you've ever seen. Oh, hi. Yes, um, I would like to have one big portion of popcorn, please. Thank you. 
down here somewhere. Good spot. Hey, there's actually cranberries. A bunch of them, but it might be a bit late for them to taste good. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> the darker ones are. <sighs> Ooh, yeah. I think uh, some of them are already too ripe. Then they kind of taste like bad, some kind of bad fruit spirit. I will now snack on some of this halva, which is basically the best thing, I, in my opinion, that you can take on a mountain. You will, we will find this everywhere here in the supermarkets uh, little markets little stores farmer stores well anyway this has almost 600 calories per 100 grams and it tastes amazing mm. so sweet so good what's that what is that Terra Mucin. Huh. Well, thanks, people. As if I didn't have to carry enough already. It's the good thing about walking through the fog is you don't know how much further up you still have to go. So it's really a focus, meditation, step-by-step -step exercise. <laughs> Check this out, this thing, the GoPro has a magnet on the back. I can stick it here. So you can watch me sit with my body. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at the view though. Crazy chat. Holy shit. Somehow for a second I thought this was a bear cub. And I'm getting paranoid over here. It seems there is a spring, a water spring, not too far from here, just 150 meters, uh, not too far down. So I'm gonna check it out, maybe refill my water. Haha, facts! There is a water source. So seeing that the wind is continuously increasing, as well as the fog, as well as the probability of rain, and I have a wonderful flat spot all around here and it's already half past five so it's gonna get dark in less than an hour I think I'm just gonna stay here this seems like a perfect tent spot and wow very very sheltered actually this is definitely gonna be my dinner spot maybe also put my tent here but it's a bit a bit crooked Fingers crossed that tomorrow in the morning it will clear up and I'll be able to see my surroundings because I think <laughs> wow the wind because I think the panorama here is actually quite cool. I'm exactly like directly on a shoulder between two massive valleys I saw on the map. Another great thing about this spot is that I can actually send a video. It goes very slowly, but I have reception here. That's insane. The, the cloth is basically collecting the water out of the fog. That's trippy, or shall I say trippy? Are you ready?
on today's menu I have couscous with another onion soup. Mm. I was about to put in a drizzle of olive oil, <coughs> um, just to add a little bit of premium flavor and fat, but this stuff has frozen. So I think I have to give it a scoop. Oh my God, look at this. It's like a olive cream. And in here it will just melt instantly. Wow. Mmm. Like olive butter. Couscous with a packable onion soup and a bit of olive butter. That's honestly one of the best combinations that I tried camping. That's really, really good. Highly recommended. I'm thinking now, it's really interesting. I've been traveling for around nine days now. I've been on the road or on the path. And um, it really feels like this is kind of, this is kind of my life now already after just nine days, you know, in crossing two borders. And I think that's pretty much the, probably the reason why I love this so much is that it's just so packed of, you know, meeting people seeing things, learning things, one way or another, it feels like, you know, zooming through a lifetime within a month or so, just because you get to see so many different ways of living and people and languages and, um, and views. Cheers. Whoa, look at the water. There's water coming in everywhere. Woo! If it's so windy between these rocks, like I'm really well protected from the wind. I don't want to imagine the wind in the exposed areas. Good morning. Everything is completely damp. Even my sleeping bag. There's a lot of water inside the tent somehow. Um, from the condensation, I guess. It's very cold and I think my estimation of clear sky in the morning was very optimistic. Let's check it out. Mm. Wow. A little bonus life hack. If you want to keep your, your batteries alive, I put them in my liners, my gloves and inside my sleeping bag, and that way they don't lose any capacity overnight. if it will ever clear up today, but I think it will. I really think it will. I mean, look, the sun is already kind of peeking through. Look at how the valley is now starting to shimmer through. <laughs> Magic moments. This is the place I came from. It was already insanely beautiful. And now look, just check this out. <sighs> wow. There's a lake back there. 
one little refuge and then insane amount of rivers meandering through the brown valley and a chamois a few birds chirping but that's it it's just completely silent It's really cold, maybe like three degrees, but the sun is just warming me up. There's almost no wind here. There's a slight breeze. Not a single sound. Just nothing. <laughs> Except for my phone. Now that I have reception up here. <laughs> Okay, so while looking at the map, I realized that these mountains back there, this range is actually where I'm heading to. So the plan is that I'm walking along here, then I go down a little bit, up again, all the way back there to where this ridge leaves the main ridge. And then I gotta walk all along this ridge. And I think somewhere around there is Mount Roshu. And from there it's basically descending on the other side to get down to a road where I'll hopefully find some cars. <laughs> and that's gonna be tomorrow, I think. I feel like every single valley that opens up just shows me new beauty in this world that I've never seen before. What? How is this real? I found another cabin and I call this the Echo Cabin. <whistles> cabin! <laughs> This lake you can see nothing but blackness. These uphill parts are really, really exhausting. Just need to tell you that because that totally doesn't come across in the video I believe. And this is not even steep but I'm totally <laughs> exhausted. break is needed. They're really creative here with their shapes and forms and colors. It looks dystopian. It looks like uh, could be from the Martian in this fog. Wow. I just realized for the next 10 kilometers there won't really be close water sources and I saw on the map there's two tiny creeks starting close to here so I'll make a little detour uh, and fill up my water bottles it looks dry but I can hear a little drizzle so I think I think I'm in luck Where 
Where is that? Oh! <laughs> right here. Not exactly sure what these things are about. There's another one up there. How is this possible? There's a cross in the middle of nowhere. There is no path nearby. Hmm. Smells like a bear attack to me. I will now show you a life hack. Uh, that I learned from Stelouche in Sibiu. So, almost no mustard left. For a long time I was in this high upper plateau um, and now the path basically continues going down for the next like, one and a half hours or so. And I only have like a bit more than an hour of more um, daylight. And as you can see, I'm already getting closer to the tree line. And this to me, <laughs> like, if you ask me, this is looking like proper bear territory. Um, so I'm wondering if I should stay up here, but then tomorrow I have, I guess, one hour, one and a half hours more walking. Um, or I continue and camp somewhere further down. And maybe I can make it to, let's say, this hill, which is a bit higher up. This whole sunset, it's been so beautiful, but uh, to be honest, I've been quite busy with... Uh, wow, look at this. <sighs> I decided to quickly set up the tent that is still wet and dirty. I'm just assuming that there's bears around here. So now I've heard that you really shouldn't cook near or next or in your camp, basically. Um, but to be honest, I would feel quite weird now walking outside into the total darkness with only a spot of flashlight with all my cooking and food utensils that are smelling um, and basically being vulnerable from 360 degrees and not really being able to see much because I only have one flashlight. Uh, rather than cooking in here, like from my tent, just from here, because I feel like then I would really know something is approaching, I know my territory, like I can see it with my flashlight, and um, I could imagine that, you know, the tent itself is already kind of a barrier for a wild animal, but maybe I could be completely wrong. Maybe you can, uh, you can tell me what you would do in this situation. I don't think a bear is gonna attack me. Good morning from my completely frozen tent. Look, the first sun rays are coming in. Good morning. Look at what happens. Not sure if you wanted to know this, but I have one long sleeve shirt that I've been wearing since Monday and it didn't even take off for sleeping because I only have one long sleeve shirt and the nights are cold. <laughs> so I really hope when I get to the valley and start to get on the road again that maybe I find someone where I can wash my clothes. <laughs> Finally, a water source that is just perfect. <laughs> that is pretty. Okay, I just found another couple of droppings. 
and this and over here is another one to me like i have no idea which other animal could drop this <laughs> than a big animal but this one also looks completely different and it has grass inside so i'm not sure if bears eat grass this must be some i don't know some kind of deer but they're so huge and here's a message to you hikers here's one there's another one I've seen so many, way too many to carry for me. Just maybe as a, as a thank you to this gift that you have here, just take your stuff. Take the stuff you leave with you. Leave nothing behind. This is the peak. <laughs> I have to dry my tent. Bear with me. Enough of this bear paranoia. I gotta be realistic, get my bearings, and get down that mountain to finally grab a beer. Sorry. Oh my God, I see people and dogs. Salud. Salud, salud. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah? You're you're the first people I see in I think 60 hours. Same goes for us. Yeah? Yeah. Where are you coming from? We are nearby. Like we have a city nearby. Okay, yeah. Hi, Vali. Narok. Stefan. <laughs> Stefan, hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, I came uh, so I'm from Austria, from Vienna. And the dogs are they yours or yeah. they're just running with they, you? They just followed us uh, since we came from the cabin. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are surprised as well. Oh my God. It's us. like, it's seven of them. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> They've nice. been like 10, but uh, some of them went back. So yeah. like, no. Okay. Not for us. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bonus of this technique, if you're also using like mustard from whole grains, whole seeds. At the end, you will have beautiful, freshly ground mustard. So now there's a road in front of me. And in the distance, I can already see a lot of human settlements starting to get closer and closer to civilization. Somehow feels good, really excited to, to go and meet some people again and to have reception and call some people. <laughs> And at the same time, it's a bit sad. Like up there, it was just really not much to think about other than the weather, the next step, place to sleep, bears. And the views, of course. It's a completely different rhythm, rhythm of life up there. This time, there's no doubt about it. Like, look at the size of this. This is, I better get going. Whew. It's fresh as well. And another one, just 200 meters after. And another one. What? Okay. This is another one. I, ooh, and another one. I made it down the other side of the Carpathians. Sweet! When I got down, a car brought me to the next city on my urgent mission to find a shower. 
I'm excited to be back on the road, to meet people again and shall soon explore a new country. Good for